Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about invoicing in QuickBooks Online. So not every business is going to wanna to invoice their customers. Like if you run like a corner store, like a store, and you have like a cash register as a point of sale and you're getting a bunch of customers, you don't really need to invoice them because they'll pay right away. But if you have the type of business where you probably have fewer clients and you send them invoices and maybe give them like a week or two to pay, then putting them in QuickBooks Online is a really great way to do it because it kind of keeps everything in place. You're able to track who has paid, how much they have paid, like what is the outstanding amount like balance that they owe and then you can receive the payments right in there and it'll match up in the bank feeds so for most of this video we will be inside QuickBooks online and I'll be showing you exactly what I do in there with invoices here is the list of what we're gonna go over and I can give just kind of like a brief intro before each thing that I explain in there so the first thing I'm gonna show you is just really simply where to go to create an invoice Okay, we're gonna start by opening a new invoice and filling it out. So you can just go to sales and then invoices. There's usually in QuickBooks multiple ways to get places, but that's how we're gonna do it today. And then create an invoice. And then it brings you all this information that you need to create. And the first things we're gonna talk about is the customer field, creating a customer, and then creating a product or service. So now we're gonna talk about what to put in that customer field. So in QuickBooks, you have vendors, which are people who you pay for like your utilities, your lighting, that kind of thing. And then you also have customers that pay you for whatever service or you know stuff that you are providing to your customers. So it's nice to have them all set up in QuickBooks. Then you could pull reports per customer and that kind of thing. And also you can store a bunch of info, like their address and stuff, which you'll see in each customer. So you don't have to be entering it in all the time. So this business already has a bunch of customers, but let's create a new one just so we can see what it looks like. So we have Joe Smith is our one of our customers that we just started doing landscaping for. And you, there's tons of information you can fill out in here and it kind of depends on what you need for the customer. In my opinion, the very most important thing is the email, supposing that you're going to be emailing this invoice. So I would put an email in here. I'm not gonna do that now because this is not a real customer. You can also put a billing address if you are going to, you know, send it in the mail. And then there's lots of other, you can put in a payment method also that can be helpful if they usually pay by check or cash or if they have a credit card in there. And then if you have general terms that you always have for this customer, you can set it too. So this is how many days they have to pay their invoice. So you can select any of that stuff you want, fill in as you like, and then save it. So we have Joe and it should have his you know, email in here so that we can email to him in the next step. My name is Morgan. My website is finepoints.biz. I would love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and a thumbs up really does help me out a lot. I also just made a new free masterclass on how I got my first three bookkeeping clients. So if you're kind of curious about how to get clients and how to get good clients, definitely check out that masterclass. The thumbnail looks like this and the link will be in the description box. The next thing we're going to be doing is setting up an item or a product and service. So this is like what you sell. And truthfully, I think this is like technically like the most complicated part of an invoice because you want to make sure that you kind of get this right and you get things flowing into the right income category and there are a few distinctions between products and services that I'll go over as well as how to get the right pricing the right number in there if you're charging per quantity for goods or if you're charging per hour for services there's different ways to do that so let's take a look at some of the product and services we already have in here just so you can get kind of an idea of what they are. So for landscape, they have some design stuff. Then they also have things like concrete and lighting and rocks. So they have actual like, you know, items. And then they also have services and gardening. So these are like humans doing this. And then rocks is obviously like just rocks. So let's make up a new one. Maybe we will call it like flower planting. So let's add our flower planting. And there's different types of products that you can do, like I said. So inventory, if you're tracking inventory, I have not done this with a client. It's a little more complicated, so you kind of need to know what you're doing if you're tracking inventory. And you might need a certain type of QuickBooks online as the other thing too. Non-inventory is self-explanatory. You're not, you know, tracking the stuff that's like in your shed or whatever and a service is like something that like here like landscaping or tax prep so it's not item that they're buying but it is a service and then this is like a bundle so if you're doing different things together that one i don't use as much but let's see what did i say flower planting so we are going to make that a service and then again, there's a lot of different things you can add in here. You probably don't need a lot of them. Category is just to kind of organize all of your products. You know, if you have different sub accounts and stuff, or if you have different, you know, types of 
landscaping things. But the most important thing is right here, income account. So this is going to make it so every time that I invoice for flower planting, it is going to go into the correct income account. And you can see some of the income accounts in here. And side note, you don't technically have to differentiate different types of income if you don't want to, but a lot of business owners find it helpful. So clearly they are wanting to know how profitable their pest control services are compared to their other services. So that's why they made this separate income account to kind of pull out that money so that they can track that and know, you know how their pest control is doing. So for the flower planting, we're just gonna call it services. And then you can also fill in your rate for this. So you could also do it later in the invoice, but let's say for flower planting, we charge $25 per hour to our client. So let's save this product and service. Oh, let's see, let's skip this for now. Okay, so then you can see flower planting was added and it's at $25 an hour. So maybe we did five, or is that a lot of flower planting? I don't know, maybe we did five hours of flower planting and then it automatically calculates it. And then we can also add other things to this invoice. So in addition to flower planting, they also got some rocks. And so say for this load of rocks, we charge $50. So you can put $50 in there. Along with that, we got some sod, which is a little cheaper. And then we also did some more design work. So that is the custom design and that's $75 an hour. And we did just, do, or we did two hours of that. And once we have those products and services filled up, you can just go about filling out the rest of the invoice. Definitely think about that customization option too, which I will go over. Okay, so now you know how to set up the customer, you know how to put in these products and services, and then you just wanna make sure and look at the rest of the invoice and make sure it looks good. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can do an address if you want. Like I said, this is how long they have to pay it. Let's say they have to pay it in 10 days. I think that's a little better. A lot of times also we just do, do a prawn receipt, which is nice. I don't use tags a lot, but if you use tags, you can put that right there and then you can also customize this so you can say you know something different here you can also hit this customize at the bottom i think i need to save it first so if we want to edit this you can do all types of things you can add your own logo you can change the colors you can move all this stuff around in different places so i've actually spent a lot of time in the past in here kind of like tweaking this just how i like it because i sometimes have like specific ways i like things to look but that is pretty much not super necessary i wouldn't say but you could definitely put your logo in there okay so i didn't mean to get out of that yet but let's go back into there and okay so we talked about those section I have wanted to use this subtotal before. I forget exactly why. I think you can put it in there. And then if there's kind of something that's a different category, like I think there was like a reimbursement down here that I used. So I was like, okay, this is how much new stuff you're spending. And then this is something I'm, you know, you're reimbursing me for. So that's kind of helpful if you need that. So you can customize, you can also make it recurring, which is nice if you have, you know, the same thing month after month and you can even tweak it, but it is kind of nice to have that baseline. And then you can print or preview if you want to print this out and mail it again, you can totally do that. I think that's everything. If you want to get a discount here, there's some stuff about tax. I actually live in Oregon where we don't have sales tax, so I am not an expert on sales tax by any means. But once you get everything as you like it, you can save and send. I'm just going to save and close it for now because it's a pretend invoice. All right, good job. You have sent your invoice. The customer knows they need to pay you. They got it in their email. And it has been that 10 days since you sent it because you put in net 10, I think we did. I can't remember in my example. But let's pretend they paid you the money. You received payment for that invoice. So now we need to go into QuickBooks and make sure that QuickBooks knows that we got that money. And this is pretty simple in my example, but if you have a large client with a lot of invoices, a lot of outstanding things, a lot of different services that they're providing, this can get a little bit complicated in receiving that payment, especially if people aren't paying like on time or if they're not paying like the exact amount of the invoice. So you do wanna get in a good habit of receiving payments as quickly as possible, as soon as you know that something was paid and just keep up on this regularly and try to be as organized as possible. To receive payment, you can go up here and do it, to receive payment right there, or you can also go to the place where all your invoices are. This is kind of nice because it gives you like different overviews of like what's being paid, what is selling, what's outstanding, and that kind of thing. So let's just go find that invoice again. It was this one. And then we can click receive payment from here. And then so say Joe sent us a check. 
and we can put the check number in there. And then I'll talk about undeposited funds in a minute, but you can put in the amount received here. So maybe he pays the whole thing, but maybe he hasn't. So if he only pays $300, you can put that in here and then it will have an outstanding balance for Joe. And then I also wanna show you if you go to someone who has multiple invoices, let's see if we can find one, John, maybe, yeah. Okay, so then if John paid both his invoices at once, you could click them both. If he paid, you know, 825, then you could do both those at once. And then you save it and that invoice is marked paid. And then you can also send like a receipt that says you've paid it. So that is save and send. And then you can see what is sent to him, this receipt here. Let's talk about undeposited funds for a second. That is something that I've actually seen people, business owners get into a lot of trouble by not doing that right. I had a client whose books were like in a big mess mainly because of undeposited funds. So when you wanna use that is, say you have a day where you get like five different payments in and then you bring them all to the bank. So maybe some are credit card payments, a couple people paid you in a check and then someone paid you in cash. It doesn't really make sense for a business to be running to the bank at every time they get a check. So usually those things are grouped together in the bank. So let's say you had those five invoices, each of them was $100. So the bank is gonna show that as $500 that was deposited that day but you're gonna to need to know which $100 thing to apply to which invoice. So it's not $500 in QuickBooks mind, it's really like five 100s, right? So if your invoice is paid and then you put it in the undeposited funds, kind of like a holding account, then when you go to match that transaction, that $500, it's going to give you a list of transactions and you are going to pick those five that were within that deposit and make sure those are correctly tied to what hit the bank. So hopefully that one minute description gives you kind of an overview. That could be a whole nother video. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that video, or you can also just YouTube other people's videos on this topic if you need it right away. So if you're looking for that undeposited funds, right, it is right here. So make sure you have a grasp of what this is. You can decide what bank account it's going to or that undeposited funds if you are using that. And then of course, reporting. This is one of kind of arguably the most important things that you're doing, why you're putting this money in QuickBooks, why you're spending all this time making an invoice and receiving payments, because your client wants to know who has paid them, where is their money, and when is it gonna be in their bank account? And then a really helpful report to send, you can find in the reports tab, there's a lot of stuff about invoices. So you can do open invoices, just a list of all of them, any of these type of things about different statuses. So let's look at what the open invoices looks like. So you can see who's late, you can sort it by different things, you can sort it by the due date. And then this is just a really good tool for your client to have to follow up on money that they do not have in their bank account. Thank you guys for watching to the end of this video. Let me know in the comments if there's any other QuickBooks tutorials that you are interested in seeing from me. All right, I will talk to you next week. Thanks.